Sutra, the ghost king asked the worthy woman, when the Bodhisattva's mother was alive, what habits did she have? The worthy woman replied, my mother held different views and ridiculed and slandered the triple jewel. Even if she occasionally believed, she would soon become disrespectful again. She died recently, and I still do not know where she was reborn. Poison Liz asked, What was the Bodhisattva's mother's name and clan? The worthy woman replied, My parents were both Brahmins. My father's name was Shila Sudarshana. My mother's name was Yudhi Li. Poison Liz placed his palms together and implored the worthy woman, Please, worthy one, quickly return home. There is no need for you to grieve further. The offender Yudhi Li was born in the heavens three days ago. It is said that she received the benefit of offerings made and blessings cultivated by her filial tribe who practiced giving to enlightenment flower samadhi self mastery king first come one the stupas and monasteries not only was the bodhisattva's mother released from the house but all the other offenders who were destined for the relentless hell also received bliss and were reborn with her having finished speaking the ghost king put his palms together and withdrew commentary Ghost King Poison Liz heard the Brahman woman's question about where her mother has become reborn, which of the six destinies on the wheel of rebirth. The Ghost King asked the worthy woman, When the Bodhisattva's mother was alive, what habits did she have? The Ghost King saw that the Brahma woman must be able to go to the house because of the power of her awesome virtue and vows, so referred to her as a Bodhisattva. What did your mother do when she was alive? What occupation was she in? How did she act? The worthy woman replied, My mother held different views. Although she was my mother, I cannot cover her mistakes. She held Devon knowledge and Devon views, which are the five sharp servants in the areas of body, extremes, precepts, views, and deviances. Devon view of the body, she never accepted the short term end of the bargain. She always thought about what was best for her body. For example, she wanted nutritious foods because she was afraid of poor health. She fed herself so well so that she was nice and round she thought it was healthy to be choppier she was always planning things for her body a good place to live good food and nice clothes she spent all of her time on doing this type of calculations how can this be good for the body this is a view of the body that refuses to let the body get hurt View of extremes. All of her views were prejudiced. She disagreed with other people's opinions about smoking being unhealthy. She thought smoking was the best and criticized you for not knowing the beauty of it. If you did, you would not quit. Her explanation seemed to make sense. Extreme views may be ingenious explanations with flawless reasoning but they are actually prejudiced. View of precepts. She held different precepts such as fighting non-vegetarian Buddhists fine. She found people who do not even touch salt as people with real skill. She teased Sangha members about how if they do not believe her, they should just try these different precepts. In general, she always found faults with something fine. There are no problems, but she will look with a mi microscope for some fault. Devon view. For example, everyone says it is right to be filial to our parents, but she would say, why? Parents procreate because they sought momentary pleasures and 
You think they are good to you. Do not bother with your parents. They deserve to get old and die. The sooner they die, the better. Otherwise, there is just one more consumer alive. She gave these big long explanations, arguing with you about frivolity. She said it is wrong to be filial. Why be filial to elders? This is it is really stupid. This is a devil's view. And ridiculed and slandered the triple jewel. She teased and criticized. When she saw people bowing to the Buddhas, she would say, "Ah, is that a Buddhist? Buddhists do everything. They are no better than anybody else. They still eat, drink, gamble, and prostitute like everyone else." What good is it to believe in the Buddhas? She she piles a list of faults on Buddhists so that Buddhists seem like criminals who commit worse things than the ten evils and the five rebellious acts. This is a form of ridicule. She slandered by saying Buddhism cheats people. She said the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha are all fake. The Buddha is made of clay. The Buddha is worse on paper. The drama is worse on paper. The sangha members are human too. They are how are they different from regular people? Why should you believe them? Why should you bow to them? You are so stupid. She scolded you hard so that Buddhists are embarrassed to the point that some are afraid to let others know that they are Buddhists. One elderly man who comes to listen to the sutras on Sundays. Asked to take refuge with me a few years ago, but I never agreed. Why? It is because he said that he wanted to take refuge secretly so that no one knows. Taking refuge is not stealing. Why should it be secret? I do not have any secret refuges here, so I told him to think things over before taking refuge. It is so strange. But he says that since he is a Catholic with long-time Catholic friends, who will call him a rebel if they knew that he believed in Buddhism. If you do not say so, you're deceiving them. That makes you even more of a criminal. He says that he is still getting some charity there. How can someone like this be a Buddhist? How pathetic! Even if she occasionally believed, perhaps and supposedly she believed, it was temporary and not forever. We must make vows to believe in Buddhism forever and not just temporarily, like the Brahman woman's mother. Temporary, temporary faith may last one hour than 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 years. Some people's faith. Does not last for more than two hours, at the most an hour or five minutes. They cool off after five minutes of faith. We must make vows to have faith forever. She would soon become disrespectful again. Perhaps for five minutes' time, she will go along and bow to the Buddhas, take refuge with the Triple Jewel, and find a teacher. But as soon as she turns around. For no particular reason at all, she no longer wishes to pay respects to the Buddhas and believe in the Buddhas. She died recently, and I still do not know where she was reborn. Personally, asked the Brahman woman for more detail because she did not say her mother's name. What was the Bodhisattva's mother's name and clan? What was your mother's name, first name, address? Say all this clearly. The worthy Brahman woman replied, "My parents were both Brahmins. There are four castes in India. The Brahmins are the clan of purity. The Kshatriyas are royalty. The Vaisyas are the merchants. The Kalas are the lowest caste, including butchers, slaughterers, etc." In India, butchers could not walk alongside other people, but had to walk on the roadside alone. If they met members of the royalty, they cannot even walk on the same road. They are marked so that everyone can tell at a glance that 
they are Kalas, the lowliest of castes. The Brahman woman is a member of the Brahman clan, a member of the elite. Both the Indian and Great Britain were hierarchical and that continues today. United States is democratic. People do not think hierarchically but equally. India was different. High class individuals could not converse with low class individuals. If you spoke with members of the lower class, nobilities looked down on you, treating you as if you were worthless. Hierarchical thought harshly divides up people. My father's name was Srila Sudarshana. Srila usually refers to the Vinaya, but here it just means calm and refreshing. My mother's name was Yue Di Li, a Sanskrit word that is not formally explained in the Buddhist sutras, but let me add some commentaries now. Yue means favor and Di means emperor, someone that emperors favor. In other words, this person was so pretty that even the emperor liked her. You may say that there's nothing fixed about a person's name. Since people's names are not fixed, you may explain it however you want, as long as it is reasonable, and especially if it is Sanskrit. Do not simply claim ignorance when you see things in the sutras you do not understand. Research it with your wisdom. Once you uncover your wisdom, you will know. You may explain it in whatever way is reasonable, as long as you do not yell at people or say the negatives, do not be so rigid. Poison Lee placed his palms together out of respect and implored the worthy Brahman woman, Please, worthy one, quickly return home. There is no need for you to grieve further. Worry no more. Do not think about your mother with such sadness and or miss her so that you cannot let her go. The offender Yue Di Li, a woman who committed offenses, was born in the heavens three days ago. How? It is said that she received the benefit of offerings made and blessings cultivated by her filial tribe, a daughter specif specifically who practiced giving to enlightenment flowers Samadhi self mastery king first common astropas and monasteries. The giving includes offering alms to the Sangha and the assembly. Not only was the Bodhisattva's mother released from the suffering of the house, but all the other offenders like your mother, who were destined for the relentless hell, also received bliss and were reborn with her. Having finished speaking, the ghost king put his palms together respectfully and withdrew. Sutra The Brahman woman returned swiftly as if from a dream, understood what had happened, and then made a profound and far reaching vow before the stupas and images of enlightenment flower Samadhi self mastery king first come on, saying, I vow that until the end of future ends, I will respond to being suffering for their offenses by using many expedient devices to bring about their liberation. The Buddha told Manjushri, the ghost king possibly is the present Bodhisattva foremost wealth. The Brahman woman is now earth star Bodhisattva. Commentary Brahman woman returned swiftly as if from a dream understood that had happened. She went back and forth to herself. Oh, I was by an ocean where I saw poison leaves, the great ghost king, the evil beasts and offenders in the house. I asked him where my mother was reborn, and the ghost king says she became reborn in the heavens. She knew that none of this was illusory but a code because enlightenment flowers, somebody self mastery king first comers or some might help to, to make it happen. And then she made a profound and far reaching vow before the stupas and images of enlightenment flower, somebody self mastery king first come one, saying, 
I vowed that until the end of future ends. When will the end of future ends occur? There will never be an end. Hence, the vows of earth stalking Bodhisattva will never end either. I will respond to being suffering for their offenses throughout all six desti destinies by using many expedient devices to bring about their liberation, allowing them to leave suffering and attain bliss. The Buddha told Manjushri, the ghost king poison leaves, who conversed with the Brahman woman, is the present Bodhisattva for most wealth. The Bodhisattva for most wealth cultivated the seven sacred gems. One faith, a gem in cultivation. Two precepts, the transmission and receiving the precepts are rare in the age of the decline of Dharma. But monastics must receive the precepts to be actual monastics. Two, erudition. Four, renunciation. Giving is also a gem in cultivation. Five, wisdom, a gem in cultivation. Six, a sense of shame. Seven, remorse. Usually, remorse and a sense of shame go together. Although they are separate here, they are necessary gems in cultivation. He is called the Bodhisattva for most wealth because he has these seven gems of faith, precepts, erudition, renunciation, wisdom, a sense of shame, and remorse. The Brahman woman is now earth store bodhisattva. This is why we must emulate the former earth store bodhisattva and practice filial respect on a wide scale, including the virtue of being filial to our parents and saving our parents.